Great. All right. Well, hi, everyone. I'm Kay Campbell. I am the Senior Director of Communications at National Nonprofit Generation 180. And I am here with Dar Williams. Dar, it is so great to meet you. Thank you so much for talking with me today. You're very welcome. Hey. And as I've shared, um, I just have to say it again, I've been a big fan of your music <laughs> for the last uh, several years. So this is really a career highlight for me. Um, and so for those who may not know Dar, um, I just wanted to share a quick bio. Dar Williams is an incredible singer songwriter who has been wowing audiences for uh, 25 plus years. Uh, a little bit more about her, Dar rose out of the vibrant mid nineties Boston music scene, inspired by influences of alt rockers, Berkeley jazz musicians, Slam poets, folk artists like Patty Griffin, Vance Gilbert, Jonathan Brooke. And after a year of touring with her first album, The Honesty Room, um, in 1994, she was invited by Joan Baez to tour in Europe and the United States. So, um, Dar, it's just really an honor to have you here. Thank you. And what audiences might not know is that Dar also drives an electric car. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of the, the big reasons we want to speak with you today, Dar, um, just Really quick for context, at Gen 180, uh, we have a new campaign called All Drive What She's Driving. And this is a campaign all about encouraging women to consider making the switch to an electric car um, and encouraging the, them to sign the pledge to go electric. Um, so I guess I'll just start off by asking Dar, tell us a little bit about your uh, electric car and why you decided to make the switch. Um, I needed a new car. I mean, you know, arguably one doesn't, but um, I because I'm traveling a lot at night and I had about $200,000 uh, miles on my car and, um, you know, it was 11 years old. I thought it, it, I should probably get a new car and, um, <clears throat> or a new used. And so, um, I just decided that I could do, you know, I've traveled with children. I've mm -hmm. traveled with friends who are traveling with pets. I've, I've traveled with friends with like, who've, who've got something going on with like a medical condition where we have to stop every 50, you know, bad backs. <laughs> I was like, all right. So basically owning an electric guitar, car, <laughs> I will have to, you know, do some planning ahead to figure out the route. Um, and, and I'll have to stop to, to charge. Mm -hmm. It'll take about 20 minutes, you know, somewhere between 20, like I was hearing that it was going faster. And, um, that's like that's fine I mean you know the decision to have kids was kind of you know a big planning exercise too and I decided right. to do that. <laughs> and I thought it's it's probably going people who are going all electric can probably do more to to bring us into the electric age of you know make everything electric make all electric renewable like even faster than the hybrids and um I can handle it well, well said. And what um, is there anything in particular that when you think about your car that you drive that you really love about it that you've noticed since becoming an EV driver? Yeah, it's much quieter. So if I'm sitting with a friend and we're talking, I have to stop at a certain point, you know, in, in a regular car. And I'm like, you know, I'm on my way to the gig. I have to guard my voice. Um, it's so much quieter that that's just not really an issue. And there's something about just the, the cabin. It's just smoother. I don't get mm. many sore throats or it's just, I don't know. So that's been, that was a difference and it's a very smooth ride and mm -hmm. pickup is, is very good, which is not really necessary <laughs> <laughs> for me, but I mean, it's kind of amazing how I, I was um, hanging out with a real like guy guy and uh who, who was talking about uh racing racing cars and he said and this was 20 15 years ago he said you know people like electric cars because they actually have they have a better turning radius or something like that mm -hmm. anyway so i i do experience that and i have to say that's been great too and um and it's very exciting to have solar panels and to charge my car, you know, to, to, to be doing all of that math. Mm, like, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm part of something. Mm, excellent. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and have you been driving your uh, electric car on your tour? I know yeah. you're going to be in, in the coming weeks. <clears throat> and how is that going with charging and fitting, fitting your instruments in there and working out okay? 
It's great for space. I have mm -hmm. an Ionique 6, which is a sedan. Mm -hmm. um, and um, and there's a whole, I mean, there's a thing to it. So you definitely have to make, a, I can basically get, you know, about 275 miles per charge. That's and really good. It's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you have to stop and, you know, make the stop for 20 minutes, you know, 20 to 30 minutes because you go to a place, you get two free years of uh, um, charging from Electrify America, which is this company. And they're in basically the parking lots of malls and a lot of time Walmarts and, mm -hmm. and it can get, and, and we're, I'm definitely part of the, the pioneering group. When, when you go and you plug it in and it works in your set, which is, you know, over half the time, um, it's amazing. And you're like, this is the future. We're here. It's so easy. <laughs> a couple of texts and then I'll be done. But when the things don't work or when you're going to a non-electrify, um, it's, uh, there's a lot, a lot of them, you know, aren't where they say they're supposed to be. And, right. Right. And the, there's a lot of, I would say, if you're going to get an electric car, get the, all the apps. There's, uh, one called way which is terrific so it shows you where all of the different things are mm -hmm. and um and uh get the something called charge point you know get some of the apps mm -hmm. in place um so i actually i have to say it's you know it's kind of like a good gig it, when it's good it's excellent when it's not good it's like all right you know and <laughs> it didn't work and you have to go to another one yesterday i went to one first one the unit didn't work I was about to do another one and a guy had just pulled up. He goes, I was going to use that one. And I was like, I don't really know the rules here. So I was right, like, right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then none of the other ones were available and I had to wait for a while. And this person kind of gave me this look like, you know, I'm going to leave now and I get it. I'm going to leave a little early so that you could like, I saw what just went down. Nice. <laughs> and nice. Terrific. And there's a lot of rapport amongst the people at the charging stations. Um, so, you know, that was that, but you know, it's just like anything when you're, when you're driving, you know, right. things happen, the red light that you didn't want because you're late for work, you know, those it's, it's like that. Um, and I think that there's a learning curve that all of these companies are on um, and that the apps are on mm -hmm. and um, that said, I can get a free charge at just about any car dealership right now, because they're so excited to get this revolution going. So mm -hmm. that's like I'm learning all the tricks and then we share tricks with each other <laughs> thing. And I think, you know, within about a year or two, we won't have to have tricks, you know, right. it's, it's, they're, they're apparently going to double the capacity. And so that's right. Happens. Yes. The charging infrastructure is happening. It's getting rolled out in just a couple of years, as you say, it'll be just more the norm. Um, yeah. And, but it's, I like to hear what you're saying about, um, it's like you're part of a community a little bit. Like you have kind of a bond with other EV drivers. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's really... that's really cool. That's really cool. Um, was, so yeah, go ahead. No, there was a woman who stopped. <laughs> She's she was driving into uh, the thing right next to me, and but I was leaving. And as I pulled out, she said, "How do you like your car?" And I, said, <laughs> it's amazing. And she goes, and I said, "How do you like yours?" She said, "Like." <laughs> <laughs> she said, she said, she said, she said, she said I'm so jealous of me because it is you know at its best I charge at night and the it adds up to I think 12 13 cents a kilowatt hour wow seven you know so basically at the end of the day it costs maybe six or seven dollars to charge my car mm -hmm. and it's off peak so it's not competing with other people's electricity right and so um at its best it's it's really cheap and really like you know easy mm -hmm. well that's that's I'm glad you said that about um another woman driver you know that you connected on that um because as I shared you know our campaign is all about encouraging women to consider EVs women have a lot of say so they've you know studied that they give a lot of input when it comes to um making car decisions but it's but women are less likely to be the first to choose an ev that they perhaps choose them for more practical reasons or there are other considerations um i just was wondering why you think perhaps fewer women ev drivers um 
or fewer women are, are driving electric cars, or maybe is that changing in your opinion as a as a woman EV driver? I hope so. I don't know if there's like a the safety thing, you know, about being right. you know, frozen in the middle of nowhere. There was a, a charging thing that I went to that was like near an underpass, and I just thought, I don't know. I think they should figure that. Like, I didn't see any cameras around, and I thought right. that's a problem. But, right. Um, but I've stopped at places late at night after gigs because I'm a night owl. Like I stopped at a place after midnight and it was open and fine. And um, uh, they they have them now on uh, at, at service stops in Maine. I think they're going to be getting them um, in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of safe places you can go at night. Um, so that might be a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know why else, because everybody I know is is talking about it. A lot of people are just saying, my next car, mm, mm -hmm. my next car. And I feel like I'm the one who can get in there with men and women and say, I highly recommend that your next car be electric. It's just getting better. And, right, um, right. and, and it's demonstrably, demonstrably better for the environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Totally. Um, and... When you bought the car, just curious, I don't know how long ago it was, but did you know about or take advantage of any of the rebates? There's state and federal rebates and incentives in the Inflation Reduction Act and there's state incentives to, there to buy an not, EV. There's one, yeah, there's one that I couldn't do because um, most because it wasn't mostly made in the United States. So mm -hmm. right, right. One, um, <clears throat> And, um, and there's one that I haven't taken advantage of yet that is from the so called NYSERDA, I believe, in New York State, where I am. So mm -hmm. I haven't done that. They gave me a big rebate right off the bat, and they gave me the two free years of charging. So I, was, I was in. I was that, in. That worked for you. Yeah. yeah. But you can get the rebates are there. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, and what advice would you offer to women drivers who are considering making the switch to an EV? Does anything come to mind? <clears throat> I would say definitely do it because, you know, I have um, about 300 miles between gigs a lot of times mm -hmm. and I'm on the road and there are a lot of variables and, and um, it's, you know, I mean, I like crossword puzzles and I like doing all of the different, you know, games, uh, <laughs> like all different kinds of games, like Wordle and stuff. So <laughs> You know, I, I like kind of figuring out what the patchwork is and um, and we show up at a gig and somebody comes sometimes and takes my car and plugs it in like nice. a few blocks away. Right, right. Um, or I walk to, you know, so so the figuring it out has been fine and mm -hmm. kind of fun for me. And um, so I uh, I recommend that everybody, their next car be, be an EV and, and to feel confident that if a person who drives 300 miles a day sometimes can get this figured out, you know, there's hotels that have places to plug in. And stuff. Right. When I'm home and I'm just doodling around, I can go on one charge for a month. So, so it's really that it really becomes a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I just bought uh, my first DV myself on Friday. Yeah. I got, uh, <laughs> I pick it up on Sunday, so I don't have it quite yet, but I'm really excited. And I think it's just, you know, I, I keep hearing like, it's like plugging in your phone. You just plug in at night and then you, you're ready to go. And then, uh, you know, we're going to use it for zipping around errands and so forth, taking the kids to uh, school and, and activities. So um, I'm super excited. Um, I have two other just quick questions. One is I have to ask, um, do you ever crank up your song traveling again when you're riding along in your EV? <laughs> no, I don't. My, I am. I am not the soundtrack of my life. I, <laughs> I have tried. I have cranked up uh, that song. By oh, you. that's fantastic. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm listening. So it, it's you know I. The, it's I'm so used to traveling that adding on this extra layer. You know, if I if I had to figure out how to book a hotel and you know do all those things. Um, uh, I like adding this to, it kind of has made my touring life more fun, but, mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then, then I listen to a lot of, uh, disco to answer your question. Oh, to, to make it even more fun. So, uh, and a, a lot of disco in Motown, uh, and you know, whatever my latest, my friend's latest albums are. Sure. sure. <laughs> but, um, 
no, it's, it's, uh, you know, I like, of course, all these people are coming out of the woodwork saying they're not, you know, they're wasteful. They, they're just as much, you know, it takes eight years for, for the battery to make itself back. And you're using the same dirty fuel, sometimes dirtier to none of that is true. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I've always been conscious of my, my footprint as I've traveled. I've always been like, well, now of course there's, you know, I, I sing songs about saving birds and trees, but, <laughs> but actually my footprint, um, there is a, it, it's a nice feeling to be out there zipping down the road in this car. That's much faster than really I ever needed a car to be. Um, that's you know smooth and fun and also knowing that you know this is this is actually the kind of thing that does help you know for all the things we tell ourselves this one is real that's right like transportation is the the number one source of climate harming car carbon emissions and so yeah it's exciting to know oh there's actually a really high impact way that an individual can do something um i agree and that's how i feel i feel similarly about getting my EV as well. Um, thank you so much, Dara. Those are the questions I had. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? Um, I'm glad that you're there and I'm glad that other EV people are there. I think that when you get an EV, there's like a learning curve that's mm. like this, this it's small. Um, and so if you get an EV, you know, know that there's that, that, and then enjoy. <laughs> you know, get the Perfect. apps. Find some, <laughs> have some discussions, get it together, and then you're part of the community. Go for it. I love it. Thank you again so much, Dar. It's Dar Williams. It was just such a pleasure to talk with you today. Nice Take to care. see you, Kate.